Okay, so this is a quick two video set on the wars of religion. And basically all this is is a kind of continuation of the initial conflicts that emerged after the Reformation. So we talked a little bit about some of these conflicts, like the Peasant Rebellion, uh, but these are going to be large-scale military conflicts between countries, not just internal conflicts, but we're going to see some actual large-scale military conflicts that emerge uh, because of the Reformation. So in this video, we're going to continue the story of what was happening in England. In the next video, we'll take a look at what's going on in France and a little bit elsewhere. But I think the focus for this video is going to be England. So when we last left England, we saw that... Uh, Edward VI, who was Henry's only son, died. And the throne then went to his oldest half-sister, Mary. And Mary essentially stole the title because Edward did pick an heir. He did pick a successor but Mary basically had uh, Edward's successor executed, and she took the title. So Mary, so let's talk about Mary for a minute. Mary, who was in charge from 1553 to 1558, was super Catholic. was super Catholic, and remember, she hated her father and the Anglican Church because they basically humiliated her mother. And, I mean, I don't blame her for hating what her father did. He basically created an entire church just to get a divorce. Uh, that is, that's bad. So I understand where Mary is coming from. Uh, she was very violent towards Protestants earning her the nickname Bloody Mary, which was probably exaggerated, but the name stuck. She formed kind of a power relationship with uh, a religious and political alliance with Philip of Spain. And they were actually married with the condition that Philip renounces any claim on the English throne. So they can get married as long as Philip doesn't try to take over England, which he agreed to. Now, the point of this alliance was to uh, continue a Catholic line in England. Mary wanted to have a child with Philip who would then be
be her heir and carry on after her. So she wanted to have a child so that that child would be raised Catholic and take over for her when she died. Uh, <clears throat> and so they, they met frequently in order to conceive a child. Um, and after one of their, after one of their, we'll call them a coupling, Mary believed she was pregnant. But unfortunately, it turned out that she had uh, ovarian cysts and she wasn't actually pregnant. Uh, and this actually probably caused her death. So it's pretty likely that she had uh, ovarian cancer or some other kind of disease that would cause these kinds of cysts, and that's probably what ended up killing her. Uh, she was relatively young when she when she died, uh, so it's an unfortunate way to go. And she knew that she was not going to have any children, and so when she died. When Mary died, the throne went to Elizabeth. Now Mary knew this. There was, there was little Mary could do about this. And so unfortunately for Mary, the throne went to her half-sister Elizabeth, the third of Henry's three children. Now, Elizabeth goes on to be one of England's greatest rulers. Uh, Elizabeth had to walk a very fine line. She had to walk a very, uh, very small tightrope. She was kind of forced into being Anglican. She really had no other choice in the matter because the Catholic Church considered her illegitimate. The Catholic Church considered Elizabeth to be illegitimate, so she couldn't rule as a Catholic ruler. She had to rule as an Anglican. But because her sister was so adamantly Catholic, Elizabeth had to uh, had to placate the Catholics to keep them from rebelling. So she is in a very tight position. She has to be Anglican but she's also got an entire country worth of Catholics that she has to keep happy so they don't rebel on her. So here's what she ended up doing. Uh, she kept the Book of Common Prayer she kept the Book of Common Prayer uh, she edited it slightly to be a little more Catholic. She, re she replaced some Anglican stuff for some Catholic stuff, like symbols. 
uh, decorations in church, little things to make the churches look a little bit more Catholic, but the church is still the Anglican church. She also made church attendance mandatory. You had to go to church, but the punishment was a small fine. So it wasn't a big deal. You wouldn't go to jail, but you had to pay a small fine. The Fancy nobles, if they were Catholic, could just pay the fine. So if you were Catholic and rich, you could just pay the fine and do your own thing. But if you were poor, and Catholic, you had to convert. You went to the Anglican Church. So basically, the end result of this is that over time, the Catholics just died out. They were replaced by Anglicans. The Anglican Church wasn't going anywhere. And so over time, the Catholics just died out. And so Elizabeth prevented a rebellion. Uh, she also had to take the lesser title of supreme governor of the church instead of the title her dad had because it was a lesser title and she was a woman. So it was it was unseemly for a woman to have the title supreme head, and so they kind of settled on supreme governor as kind of a placeholder title for her. Now, this is what she did to maintain people's allegiance at home. It doesn't mean that she was able to keep everybody in Europe happy. And Elizabeth's greatest enemy was her brother-in-law, Philip. So Philip was her biggest enemy. And try as she might, she couldn't prevent a war with Philip. Philip hated Elizabeth. Philip hated Elizabeth. Uh, for one, she was Protestant. And second, she wouldn't marry his cousin to restart a Catholic line in England. So Philip absolutely hates Elizabeth for these reasons. And so in 1588, Philip sends 
an army to conquer England reconvert it to Catholicism and by the way take out the Netherlands chief ally. So the Netherlands and England were pretty close. They were both Protestant and they worked together to kind of make Philip angry. So this would take out three birds with one stone. It would get rid of Philip's most hated rival, Elizabeth. We'd bring England back to Catholicism and take out the Netherlands' pesky ally, England. So we clear the board of Spanish problems. Unfortunately, England managed to defeat the Spanish Navy, which we now remember as the Spanish Armada, that was bringing the army to England. And so from this point forward, Elizabeth is seen as England's protector, even though she's a woman. And to connect this back to when we were talking about the Netherlands, this was seen as the opening for the Netherlands to kind of de facto, unofficially be independent. So we mentioned this the other day, uh, but this was the opening for the Netherlands to kind of be an independent country now because there wasn't anything the Spanish could do to stop them from being independent. Uh, one last note about Elizabeth, and I'll just put this over here. Elizabeth was uh, conspicuously depicted as a virgin. She never married. She claimed that she was married to England. So she never married and never had children. It's likely that she had romantic partners, but that was all kept from the English people. Uh, so she never married, she never had children, which was fine for while she was alive. But the fact that she never had children meant that after she died, there was an issue with finding an heir because she didn't have any children. And that was the last of Henry's children. So eventually, they settled on her cousin, who was the king of Scotland. The king of Scotland, and he was James the Sixth. So James the Sixth of Scotland becomes James the First of England. So he holds both titles 
at the same time. So in Scotland, he is James the first, or James the sixth. In England, he is James the first. Uh, we are going to come back to James because James is pretty much the start of the English Civil War. So we will worry about James uh, in time period two. We'll start time period two with the English Civil War. Uh, I kind of think that's the best place to start time period two. So we'll stop the story of England there with James. Uh, we'll pick it back up when we get to time period two and the English Civil War. Uh, so that is the first of two videos on the wars of religion. So uh, the next one, we're going to take a look at what's going on in France, and then we'll take a look at what's going on in the Austrian lands of the Habsburgs. Uh, so that'll be in the next video. So until then, this is Mr. Nissen signing off.